I'm going to show you a chart that's going to make you want to sell all your properties and maybe even wish you'd never bought them in the first place. This really doesn't look good for property. Over the last 25 years, a basket of global shares has beaten investing in UK property in general and every individual region, including London. And this is over a period that by historical standards has been good for property. Well, there is a twist to this, which we'll come to later. But even aside from the fact that returns have been better, there are some huge advantages to holding shares instead. There's the obvious one, of course, which is you don't have to do anything. You can make property more hands off, I've got a whole system which I talked about in a different video which we'll link to below, but it's never going to be as hands-off as just passively owning shares. Then of course there are the tax advantages. You can put your shares into an ISA, meaning that all your income and growth in their value is tax-free, or you can put them in a pension wrapper, which means you're effectively buying them with pre-tax money and means you're only going to pay any tax on them later when you might be in a lower tax bracket. But the advantages don't stop there. Another one is that you can average in. So you can just buy a certain monetary value of shares every month, regardless of what's going on, which means you're at less risk of making one big investment and then suddenly seeing the market drop off a cliff. With property, you can't do that. You're spending a long time just holding cash while you're saving up for the next purchase. And then you have to make a big purchase in one go, which of course exposes you to more timing risk as well as just being psychologically scarier to do. And of course I've been saying shares, but really that's just one example of an asset class. You've also got bonds, gold, commodities, all sorts of things you can invest in, all of which should in theory perform well at different times. So you can build your portfolio such that whatever's going on in the wider world, there should be at least something performing well for you. Those are some compelling arguments and I'm starting to question some of my own choices now. So does property have any redeeming features? Well, yes, there is one giant one, which is leverage, the ability to use mortgages. So if you're using a 75% loan to value mortgage, then you're only putting in a quarter of the money yourself. Meaning in theory, you could buy four times as much property as you could shares. In reality, you're gonna have stamp duty and other costs, but you can probably buy three times as much. And if you're buying three times as much of something, then it's probably gonna work out better, even if the performance is slightly lower and even if the tax situation isn't as advantageous. But of course, while leverage means you've got three times as much exposure when things are going well, you've also got three times as much exposure when things are going badly. So you could end up being way, way down on paper, at least for long stretches of time. So if you are using leverage, it is so important to make sure you're never put in a position where you're forced to sell. And we've done a whole video about mortgages, which we'll link to below. There's another advantage, which no one ever really talks about, I think might be the biggest of all. But before we get to that, another point in favor of property is that the income is very predictable and tends to be linked to inflation. So earnings over time tend to go up with inflation and as you can see from this chart rents tend to go up in line with earnings not exactly not always at the same time but the relationship is clearly there so that makes property really attractive for anyone who's seeking an income either now or in the future and as for that possibly biggest advantage i mentioned it's that you can't fiddle with it with shares you can check the value of your portfolio from minute to minute and you can panic and sell at the worst possible time when the market is down. And you can say, oh, that isn't something that I'd do. But the data shows that people do tend to do this. By contrast, property is illiquid. It's hard to value. It's a nightmare to buy and sell, which you can see as disadvantages. But it forces you to think long term. And in reality, if you own anything for a long enough period of time and just leave it alone and get out of the way, you're probably going to do all right. So the ideal is actually probably to do both, which is what I do. Buy property, but also use your available tax wrappers to shelter shares and other assets for the long term. But in reality, most people naturally favor one or the other. And it doesn't really matter which you go for. The best investment is the one that you're enthusiastic about making and you're comfortable about holding over time. But this all, of course, assumes that you do it well. And there are big mistakes that you can make with both property and shares. When it comes to property, there are a few mistakes that I see beginners make again and again, which really holds them back. So watch this video next to learn what they are and how you can avoid making them yourself.